In this video, we're going to take a look at two different methods that we can use to bypass root detection on Android devices. The first is a dynamic approach using Frida, and the second is a static approach patching the APK using APK tool. Okay, so I know I keep saying that we're going to look at some ways to bypass authentication on the app, but I decided to restructure the series a little bit just because the previous episode was looking at how we could root Android devices and we used the root AVD project, which uses Magisk, and also the Super SU app to root the device, but it was still showing that the device was not rooted whenever we ran the insecure app. So we looked into the code and found that the checks that were being done were quite simple. So one of them was checking for this superuser.apk, and whenever we installed superuser, it gave it a different APK name. It had some like letters and numbers after it, so that wasn't coming back as true. The other check is does SU exist and this function will call which on SU and it will basically return if that's true. However, it was originally using system xbin which, which is where the which binary used to be on Android devices so that was also a fail in which basically meant that the root detection was already broken so at the end of the last video we patched the APK and actually fixed it so you can see here this is now system bin which, so this will come back true, and it is doing that right now. It says that the device is rooted, and that's because of this check. The other reason I decided to do this video now is because it's a good demonstration of the use of Frida, whereas the authentication bypass isn't. So we'll start off with that, and we'll start off with Frida because we did do the APK patching on the previous video. I've already got a few windows open, so let me just go through this. We've got the app running in the background. If you check the first or the second video, we went through on how to set up the insecure app. In the second tab, I have open Android Studio, I believe. Yep, that's Android Studio running, and that's where the Android virtual device is. And then in the next tab, I've got MobSF, the mobile security framework running, and also Jadix GUI, which you'll notice I also managed to change the theme as well. So you can go to File, Preferences, and then change the theme. I think it's looking a lot nicer as it is now. And the reason I have Mob SF open, we looked at this briefly in the first episode, I believe, and there's quite a lot of features on the static and dynamic analyzer, which we'll look at in a future video. But the reason I have it open is because we've got Frida built in. So you can see there's a Frida scripts here. We've got some default ones. We've got a Frida code editor and then some available scripts down here as well. We have the Frida logs that we can access in here. And you can see I'm currently showing the screen. So this has basic functionality but we can actually use the emulator here and then we'll see things happening on the screen on the other side. So the first thing we could do here is just try to start instrumentation. So this is gonna run Frida, but we don't have anything selected and our function isn't doing anything there either, but that's gonna run. We could have a look in the background as well and see what's happening with our output. That's Jadix, but we have our mob SF here. All right, nothing of interest. And there we go, we can go to autofill credentials because we've already logged in. And the device shows it's rooted. But notice that we have this root detection bypass built in. So let's try and tick that first of all, and then just start instrumentation again. So the device will reload, we'll autofill credentials and log in. And now it says the device is not rooted. So that was an easy bypass, right? It works with the built-in default script and we didn't even need to install Frida or worry about any of that stuff. Another way we could do that, let's untick this and let us modify this code in the code editor. So you could select one of these scripts and try to load it. Actually, that's what we already had. Let's do another one. There we go. All right, so you can get some templates up, and maybe modify some of these. I'm going to paste one in, and this is a very basic function. You can see that it's going to basically hook the post login, and it's particularly looking for this function, does SU exist? And it's going to override that function and basically just print out to the console root bypass and then return false. So if we go back to the code, we'll see that the does su exist function, at the moment it basically runs through, it's gonna call which on the su binary, on the su APK, and then it's going to go through and either return true if this comes back as true, so it does find the su, or false if it doesn't. And what we basically wanna say is override this function and don't do anything in here. We don't care what code's in here. What we want it to do is just return false. We don't need to worry about the super user APK because that one wasn't returning true previously anyway. And actually, I'm using the root AVD project with Magisk now. I'm not actually using the super user APK at all. So let's go back to our dynamic analyzer. We've got the root detection bypass turned off here. So we'll do start instrumentation again. And we'll go back to our emulator, wait for it to boot up and log in. And we'll see that the device is not rooted. 
Now, obviously, this isn't a very sophisticated route bypass because the route detection isn't very sophisticated, as we found out previously. So if we were actually dealing with a real device, you might want to use a script like this, which is a generic anti-route Frida script, which will deal with a lot of checks. And we're going to give this a go. In fact, we could give this a go in our editor there as well. Let me take a copy of this. Let us paste this in here and start instrumentation. We'll log in again. And it says the device is not rooted. So that works. But we're doing all this through MobSF. So what if you're not using MobSF? What if you just want to use Frida manually? Let's take a look at that. Now you can load Frida through Python scripts or you can use it through the command line. In future, we'll be looking at some Python scripts. So today, let's just take a look at the command line. And the first thing I'm going to do is just create a script.js. So this is basically the script that we want to load. This is going to hook that function. It's just the same one that we just used previously. We're just doing a different way of doing it. And we'll save that. What you also want to do here is be very careful to remove some of these things. So whenever I was doing this originally, I forgot to remove the root CA or unset the HTTPS proxy. I'm not sure which of these was the issue, but if you don't do that, you'll never be able to log in with the app again. Another thing to mention is I also had some issues. So I don't actually have Frida installed at the moment. If I do pip install Frida, it will install the current version. And that was also because whenever I had the latest version of Frida installed, MobSF Frida didn't work, even though it's using like a virtual environment. And I should really be using a virtual environment for the Frida package, but yeah, I messed up my Python configurations a long time ago, as often happens, and haven't sorted them out. So that's Frida installed anyway. You also need to do pip install Frida-tools, which I already have installed, and then you need to make sure Frida is on the device as well. So just go to the Frida GitHub and you have the release here, show all assets, and then scroll down and try and find what you're looking for. It's the Frida server that you need to put on the device and you need to match your architecture. So we're using Android and 64-bit. So we'll download that to the desktop and then extract that. I've got an alias set up for extract, which just deals with a lot of different formats. So I don't have to remember the syntax of all these various programs. So this will basically just extract any of these types. So I'm going to use that extract and then Frida. It'll also delete the original archive as well. I'm going to move the binary to just be Frida-server. And now we need to upload it. So we can do ADB push and then we're pushing Frida-server. And then where do we want to put it? I'm going to put it data local temp. Looking good. ADB shell. There we go, we're already root, so that's good. Make sure you have that little hash. And then we'll go to data, local, temp. We'll change the permissions, 755, and Frida server. And that should be it. We should just be able to run the Frida server now. Let's try and run it. And it says the address is already in use. Okay, I need to exit the mob SF. That's one thing I forgot to do. Let me exit that. And let's try that again. All right, looking better. So you don't see any feedback, but it is running. Now let's just go back to our emulator as well. We need to unlock the app, I believe, or actually turn it on. So we'll enter in our pin. And there we go. The device is booted. Now let us try and run Frida-PS-U, capital U. And this should basically come back with a list of the apps on the device. And notice that it doesn't, it just kind of freezes there. And originally I was trying to do this with a Python script and I was having a similar problem where it basically just wasn't able to connect. And the command that we should be running here is Frida-U-F and then this is the insecure bank and then dash L with the name of the script we want to run. And let's try that as well. And we'll see some more feedback it's saying spawning, but we'll never actually see any connection. The Frida server just hangs and this will eventually time out. So I spent quite a bit of time troubleshooting this as well. I eventually found an issue on GitHub, which I'm going to bring up. Basically a lot of people having the same issue. So fail to spawn while spawning, it times out and a lot of people experiencing the same thing and eventually find out that, okay, it's actually been failing since 16.0.3. So that seems to be the workaround is basically to downgrade 16.0.3 and then you also need to use Frida Tools 12.0.4. So let's give that a go. First thing we'll need to do is do pip uninstall Frida 
and then we'll need to do the same with the tools and we also need to purge the cache to stop it from reinstalling the cache version so we'll uninstall both and then we'll do pip install frida the version is equal to 16.0.3 and then did i clear the cache i didn't did i okay it downloaded the correct one anyway let me do pip cache purge because i know it will do that with frida tools and we'll do that as 12.0.3. Alright, so that installs. Now, if we try and run this again, just run the exact same. In fact, we'll do the ps-u. Not looking good. Let's try and do our actual command again. And again, it's just stuck on spawn in. So the other thing that we didn't do is fix the Frida server version. So Let's go back to our releases. Let us go and download the relevant release, so 16.0.3. You can let me know in the comments, by the way. I don't know much about Frida, so maybe there's some workaround that I'm not aware of. But we'll go to 16.0.3 Android. Oh, this is the dev kit. No, we're going to server. 16.0.3 Android x86 by 64. And then I'm going to just wget extract Frida. We'll move the Frida server to Frida server. I'm going to go back to the Android device. We'll cancel this. What is it? Control D, Control Z. Okay. Let us, in fact, let me close this down. I'm going to push that again. ADB shell again. CD data local temp it kept its permissions so that's fine so we'll just try and run Frida server again permission denied okay sorry 755 Frida server there we go all right it's running let's try this again so we're just trying to run the script and notice it works straight away so let's go to our emulator the emulator is there can we autofill yes log in Root bypass, notice that popped up, so device is not rooted. So we could literally just close this down, go back to our emulator, go back, log in again, device is rooted. Run the script, go back, log in, device is not rooted. And we can do the same thing with the generic bypass that we got. If we go to our code share again, paste this in, save it, and this is one that will work against more reliable root detection methods. So run it again, Android emulator, log in, and notice that it will bypass those checks. Okay, so that's the dynamic approach. That's how we can use Frida to hook the function so that every time that function is called, it's overwritten with the function that we provide. Another way that we can do this is by patching the APK, and that's how we actually fix the root detection. So if you already saw that, we're not really gonna do anything different in this case, but for demonstration purposes, let's have a go anyway. Let us decompile the app again. So I'm going to copy over the insecure bank APK to the desktop. I'm going to decompile it with APK tool D and then pass that in. It's going to create a folder with all the decompiled code, which we can go and reverse engineer. So this is turning this into the smally files. Remember that we have our Java, our high level language. We have our dex files so that dalvik bytecode which is the low level and then we have the intermediary basically like assembly code which is the smally which we can go and modify and here we go we've got insecure bank let's go in there let's open up this directory in vs code so we can have a look through it go into the smally android no com android and we go and find the function that we're interested in i believe it was the post login and we can go and search for what we're interested in here. I think it was which. Well, I know it was which. And this was a string. Remember, we changed this from xbin to bin, and that's what fixed it. So we could simply change it back, and that will break the root detection or bypass it. Another thing we could do is change the su. So instead of it calling which on su, it could just call it on some random name that's not going to come back as true. And there's various ways we could do this. We could go and look for the conditions. So we could have it so it always returns true. We could also just change the if else statement, which is normally a very easy way for these condition bypasses. Lots of different ways we can do it. Let us save that. And 
I'll minimize this, we'll rebuild it. So the problem is if you try to rebuild this with APK tool, it comes installed on Parrot and maybe on Kali as well. We do APK tool build and then, in fact, let me, sorry, let me go back a directory. APK tool build and then pass in that folder and let's see what error we get because it's using this dirty version. And yeah, we get this error. So we have to go and download the latest version. So I'm gonna go and do that now. Download this jar, APK tool 2.7.0. And then we can just run this again, but we'll replace the name with java-jar and then the APK tool jar. It's gonna build it and it's gonna put the result right here. So don't forget this. I often forget this and then just like reinstall the same APK. So I'm going to copy that here, and that is going to be our new APK. The only problem is it's not signed, so if you try to install this, it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is paste in a command. First thing we need to do is generate this key store. So very basic command, key tool, generate a key, the key store name, the alias, and then the algorithm that we want to use. It asks us for a password, so just put that in. I'm going to use integrity. And then we have to put in some details here as well. We can just leave these blank, but just make sure that you do say yes at the end. And there we go, that's generated. Next up is actually sign in the APK. So I'm gonna clear that, I'm gonna paste this in, jar signer, we're using the key store that we just created, we're using it against the APK we just created, and the alias is integrity. We enter in our passphrase, which is integrity, and there we go, it's self-signed, that's fine, we don't care. Let's go and install it. We need to uninstall the current version, so, a couple of ways you can do this, you can do it through the actual phone, which I'm doing right now, or you can do it with the ADB. Both are fine. That's it uninstalled. Let's... No, it's not. All right, that's it uninstalled. Let us now install the new one. So ADB install insecure bank. Oh, I hate the way it doesn't give you autocomplete when I do this. So you have to always redo it or type it in manually. ADB install. Paste that in. It installs, and now if we go and try to log into it, also fill. Oh, we've got to redo this, okay. Enter in the credentials, bearing in mind that I changed mine, so they won't be the same as the default. Log in. Now we have to do all the server stuff again. Just put in your local IP. Submit. Log in. And the device is not rooted. Let's just make sure we're not still running the... All right, so we're not running that, but it doesn't matter anyway because the check wouldn't come back as true. And in fact, if you actually run that, let's try and run it and also fill login. There we go. All right, so didn't find anything for the super user APK, but it didn't even mention the other one. Remember up here it said bypass system bin which SU. It's not even trying to bypass it now because we already patched the APK so that that's no longer an issue. Okay, so that's two different ways that we can bypass root detection on an Android device. The first was a dynamic approach by hooking the function and then replacing it with something else using Frida. The second was patching the APK using APK tools. So just showing that there are different ways of doing things and different tools that we should be familiar with. So you can see I'm over on the Integrity website at the moment, just encouraging you to sign up and check out some of the programs. We do have programs with APKs. And they generally get less attention than web-based programs, partially because people just aren't familiar with the tools that are required and setting them up, and hopefully these videos will help. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As ever, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.